first thing that I studied and made that I thought of as kind of artwork was photography. And I had been given a camera, Pentax K1000, when I was 12. And that developed into an interest in architecture, interest in painting, and these things kind of all flowed into each other. In many ways, I never saw the distinguishing factor between these different mediums. It's kind of always been that way for me. This kind of varied practice, interdisciplinary. I'm Daniel Arsham. I'm an artist. I live in New York City in 2019. My grandfather collected art and he was sort of the only person I knew that had real art. He's also the one that gave me the camera. So I think he had a big influence on my thinking around the appreciation of objects. When people ask me what I do, it's sort of a difficult question because the practice is so varied. But artist is a good kind of overarching term. The work ranges from sculpture to painting and experiential type things. I think my primary focus is in sculpture at the current moment. When I was in school, I primarily made paintings. A lot of the earlier paintings that I made were things that depicted structures that I couldn't yet construct or build either through lack of physical means or just like the financial resources to realize a project on a larger scale. So painting was a way to invent these ideas through image making. Photography similarly creates a medium where the everyday can be positioned through the lens of the photographer or the artist. And so I found these different ways of using alternate mediums to convey different ideas. My early career began actually in a completely different universe in stage design. I met Merce Cunningham, the choreographer, in 2004, and he was in the process of creating a new stage work in Miami, and I happened to be living there at the time. He asked me to collaborate with him on that, and not having studied stage design, not having ever been <laughs> physically on a stage, it was a little bit of a crash course in not only learning about the mechanics, but his really in-depth study of compressing and expanding time for a viewer over the course of a performance. Later in my own work, I began to think about how I might do that over a wider period. Could I think about geological time frame and taking objects from our present and projecting them into the future through a material shift? So things that transform into crystal or um, volcanic ash. A lot of this work began after a trip in Easter Island. I did a series of um, paintings on the island that was published into an experiential travel book that Louis Vuitton did that contains no text. It's just my impression of the island and the famous Moai statues there and the mystery around them and just this idea that archaeology inherently is fiction and there's no definitive way of telling those stories because we didn't exist in that moment. So could I kind of reverse engineer that idea of archaeology? In the selection of objects that I've cast in my own work, I've always looked for things that were almost icons of themselves. So it wasn't just a camera, it was that particular Polaroid camera that we all you know, remember and have seen. Things that I felt worked in a kind of global context, so whether I was showing them in New York or Paris or Tokyo, they had a similar kind of global reach. And then things that identified with a particular era well. So a basketball didn't exist 250 years ago. It's like tied to a particular moment in time. In identifying those things, I found that there's a kind of entrance for people into the work, um, an initial focal point that many different types of people can approach, and then they can think proactively about what these objects mean when they've been shifted in material. The materials began after that first visit in Easter Island. I brought back some stones, uh, volcanic stones with me from the island and crushed them up and cast. The first camera was actually that Pentax camera that I had been given as a child, reforming this object in volcanic ash. And so I used the mold making techniques that I had learned in school and then I came back the next day and the entire thing had kind of like collapsed into a pile on the table. So there's a little bit of experimentation and process and in, in many cases it took years of developing these various materials which all have their own binding elements that hold them together. I want the works to look like they're in a state of decay but I don't want them to continue to do that. So there's a little bit of 
almost you know science and alchemy in the transformation of one object into another. And there's been a lot of writing in relation to my work and some of these exhibitions that takes a kind of apocalyptic, like pessimistic, you know, approach. And I, I always thought it more about a kind of eventuality, like doesn't matter what happens for all of us, these things will become these kind of archaeological relics in the future. And in thinking that way, I think there's a little bit of freedom and lightness, potentially, um, in the work.